cut it. Um, again, what I would again always encourage you is to show me at least off to the side what volumes you're calculating. So off of there, um, as I've done my work uh, there, I've got this bottom uh, prism where in that bottom prism I've got a two by six. There's that base, and then there's that height of that bo uh, bottom prism. So two by six by three. Now, when you cut things, we know that it's going to adjust some of the different dimensions of one of those. So, on the other one, that uh, top one here, okay, uh, let me grab a color. Okay, um, as I come down off that, I'm not running that whole eight feet down, am I? So, you got to make sure you're watching to see that height is not that whole eight feet. The way I cut mine. Um, it is eight feet, but right here that's a three feet. So eight minus three is giving me a height of that prism to be instead not of eight, but five feet. That's where my height of five feet is coming from. <coughs> now again, a lot of numbers going on, but that is a two by four base, and that's where my other two by four by five is coming from. So if you were able to do, you know, that simple one up here, it is the same idea, obviously, with this one, one stacked on top of the other. But you got to pay attention to where you cut things at, and it's going to definitely change at least one, maybe a second dimension um, up there. And then show me that work. I'm not looking for anything fancy, all right? But what I am looking for is, is I have my work shown um, on here. Show me what dimensions you're using. Give me those volumes that you got, and then give me your total. As we take our quiz next week, if you just give me an answer, and your answer's wrong, okay, if we take letter F, and you just got nothing there, and you get a final answer, and the answer's wrong, as I grade this one, I'm going to be doing here, uh, this would be like a three-pointer. A point for each volume, and then a point for the summation. So if you got no work there that's wrong, you're, you're definitely going to get three points uh, automatically. Um, and if there is no work shown, again, I don't know where that work is coming from. Is it coming from EU? Is it coming from EVA? Or is EVA doing a stretch and is it coming from Chloe? Okay. So small things like that. Make sure you're showing your work so I know where things are coming from. And if you do mess up, you know, I can at least say, oh, it's because you use a two by four by three. That's a small mistake. Those are easily good ones to fix. All right. Now, <coughs> after that, okay, we get into a couple of uh, other ones here. Let me drop it down to three where we're talking about some of these composite ones. Uh, number three is another composite. As we can see, we got a what? A prism. But we got a prism on top of a, not a full cylinder, do we? We get ourselves a half cylinder. Again, as I was just staying there, some of you do a very nice job of showing your work, and some of you need to keep working on that. Okay? So if I, as I've got off to the side there, my prism, the bottom prism, should be, is usually no issues. Um, it's a 20 by 16 by a height of 30. Take it off to the side, multiply it out, 9600. Okay. Now that cylinder's on its side, right? Now with that being on its side, and also only being a half of a cylinder, right? So I gotta modify my cylinder formula formula. As we've been working through yesterday, um, that cylinder formula, it is pi r squared times h, but it's not a full one, so that's where we're going to use half of that cylinder formula, half of pi r squared times h. Nothing really crazy on that, is there? So you got to pay attention then, reading carefully, what's my radius and what's my height. So as I've gone through this particular problem for years, reading carefully that that's representing my radius of that uh, of that base of that circle. So that radius 
is right here. There is my center. That's why I'm saying my radius is 10 um, off of that. 10, I wonder if that works out well. 10 squared. Check my arithmetic off that. Okay. <coughs> now, off there, the height, looking around there, the height is 16. From a base to a base is my height. In this case, it's from half circle to half circle, which I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and that's at 16 off that. That's at 16 right there. That's representing my height of the cylinder. It's on its side, isn't it? So it's on its side. That's representing my height of the cylinder. So times 16. Now after that, as I caught that 10 squared, as it should be, all right, so 10 squared, well, duh, that's 100, times 16, but I gotta take it times a half, and I do still have 800 there, so it uh, looks like I'm gonna pay off that, okay? And then 9,600 plus 800 pi, okay? Now, when I added those together, we talked about this with circles the last month, or May now, today's May 1st. It's a prism that does not have pi. It's a half cylinder that does have pi in it. If the directions here are saying in terms of pi and to nearest tenth, again, we cannot add those together. We're going to leave them separate. 9,600 plus 800 pi, that's the best we can say. We saw that with circles. We're going to keep seeing that over the next couple weeks with, um, with our volume. We're going to have circles with cylinders and with uh, spheres and with cones today. And then we go back to our calculator, and then we have to go punch it in, both of these, as we do with circles, round to nearest tenth, and I, I'm assuming hopefully that's correct. Okay. So that one's a little bit more, just because you got to remember, hey, we got ourselves a half cylinder. Okay. It's a good thing you know if that pays up. Okay. And then walking backwards. Come back to the other one. You got a big box and uh, I think a whole bunch of other boxes inside of it, right? So you're loading uh, <coughs> medical supply boxes into this crate shelf. So a big old crate. And inside of that, you're going to put inside of that a whole bunch of um, smaller boxes. And each medical supply box that you're going to put inside of this again, crate is one and a half by one by two feet deep. What's the number of boxes you start stacking inside of there that you're going to be able to put inside of this crate? So, again, this is uh, gets into what we say is logistics. So you start wanting to fit how many bits you can put in there and how many crates can you get inside of a moving uh, van or crate, uh, moving box, shipping box. So, here we got to know what's the volume of one of those medical supply boxes. And then after that, how many we, how much is one those take? And then we can go through and see what's the big volume there, and then divide. And that's what I ended up doing there. So the volume of one of those medical supply boxes, it's not quite a cube, all right, almost, but not quite. So it's just a prism, one and a half by one by two. That's where I got the three from. The crate. Again, not quite a cube, almost. 10 by 10 by 9, that's where I got the 900 from. Now always watch to make sure they're in the same units. We are, so that's nice. And then I took 900 divided by 3. They're both cubic feet, so we don't have to worry about anything like that. So 900 divided by 3, we've got inside of there, we can stack nicely um, 300 of those boxes inside of that, what you call it side of that crate up there. Okay. So that's usually from previous years when I've gone through that front side, just kind of quickly talking about those are two of the biggest ones off of that. Okay. All right, let's flip it to the back. Now on the back side, okay, on the back side, before I go back to the other one, any questions real quick on, I'll leave that there now. Put on 10, 11 there, there's our revolutions. 
on the revolutions. Remember, as we talked yesterday, the uh, line that you revolve it around is very critical to know if that cylinder is going to be um, standing tall or on its side, because then it's going to influence um, what that height and that radius will be, because it will definitely change up on you. So making sure you're paying attention what axis or what line um, you're revolving about, because it does make a big difference there. Calculating it's nothing big, all right, but um, making sure you're paying attention what type of cylinder you got, semi tall or on its side, is the big one. Okay. And then up at the top, okay, kind of the same deal we just talked about in the previous. Kind of the same deal we just talked about in the previous side of that crate a second ago with a little bit of applications there. With um, looking at the back here, okay, um, we got a swimming pool. We just modified it's a prism. So I mean, not all, I guess, but this particular swimming pool is representing just a big old prism, okay? It's a 10 by 20 by 8. Just a big old prism, okay? And all we did was change the dimensions and how much more water are you putting into that. Um, we talked about number seven the other day. Um, given the volume, working it backwards, okay? Um, off of that, now that one does have a extra part to it. Asking what is the Come on, surface area. There it goes. So, working that backwards, okay, you got to know what the side lengths of this cube is. So, we know how to work it backwards. We talked about that yesterday. I took that cube backwards, and that's where I got a 7 from. So, this cube all around is a 7 by 7 by 7, okay? Now, we know a cube is made up of all squares. And because it's a 7x7x7, seven by seven by seven, every square is, well, 7x7. Seven seven. So the area of one of these squares is what? 7x7 seven seven is 49, right? And how many squares inside of a cube? Not inside, that make a cube? Six. So the surface area, as I now lay this cube flat, uh, for the net of this, one, two, three, four, Five, six. Each one of these is 49. 7 by 7, 49. 49 by 6. So we can easily calculate the surface area of a cube as 49 by 6. 294 inches squared. That's where I'm getting that surface area off of there. Okay. So off of that surface area, again, it's not crazy complicated. We did a whole bunch of area work this throughout the year. Okay. All right. So there's that. And then lastly, take you back to your biology classes, to your science classes. Chemistry classes. Jillian? Zoom in? Yeah. That good? Yeah. <laughs> that better? Okay. That's the best one? All right. At, uh, I think it was like 300%. I'll remind that. 400%? Okay, cool. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. With the last one there, um, using our unit conversion. So we've done, again, random unit conversions throughout the school year. This is a volume one. So with the volume one, <coughs> excuse me, we got to take our 343 cubic inches, and um, we can't just do it once. If we just do it once there, the inches alone would cancel out, cancel out uh, once here. But remember, we have inches, inches, inches up here. 
we would cancel out one of them, but still be left with an inches squared. So in my work that I have here, I have that to the third power. So by having that to the third power, what that means then is I have this as now 12 to the third inches to the third. So here, this means 12 times 12 times 12 inches, inches, inches. That cancels out. Now that will cancel out. So when I go now to my calculator, I'm going to have 343 divided by 12 to the third. That's going to now actually convert that over to feet. And feet to the third, that means feet times feet times feet. That is cubic feet then. So on that conversion there, 343 divided by 12 to the third, it's going to be a ridiculous number, I believe. That's my calculator pulls up then. Still pulls up. And still pulls up. Okay, 343 divided by, but you got to do that 12 to the third. If you're not doing that 12 to the third, we're not going over to a, a cubic there. And here, you have to just use your best judgment. I would say 0. Point, unless it tells me what around. Nope, it didn't. So 0. 0.2 would be fine. Uh, you can say 0. 0.198, I'd be fine with that. 0. 0.2, I'd probably go for myself. Okay, uh, cubic, what we just say? Feet. All right, cubic feet. But on these volume conversions, whatever you use for that conversion right here, you're going to have to cube it. Uh, that way, you are canceling out those uh, to the thirds off of that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We did one like number nine, working it backwards. And then the last one here, we've all seen a can of tennis balls. The can of tennis balls, they're usually nicely well, stacked one on top of another. And, okay, uh, can of tennis balls. There we go. So they're stacked again, usually one on top of the other, just like that, inside of a cylinder, right? So. That's our visualization that we're using with that. And on there, the diameter of each uh, tennis ball is two and a half inches. So we we're trying to calculate the volume of the cylinder, right? So we know to get the volume of the cylinder, it's pi r squared times h, the height. Well, we know what the radius is. The radius, because that's the diameter of the tennis ball, uh, that diameter of the tennis ball, if the radius is two and a half, that means the radius is half that, right? So two and a half divided by two, that's where I get the 1.25. The sphere, um, which is a tennis ball, uh, the diameter is from edge to edge, therefore the radius is 1.25. Where did I get the height from? The diameter of that tennis ball. I get a 2.5 here. No, I don't. I get a 2.5 here, a 2.5 here, and I get a 2.5 here from the bottom of the sphere, all the way stacked to the very tippy top of that sphere. Not sphere, sorry, cylinder. Cylinder from the bottom to the top. 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 gives me a total of. 7.5. And that's where I get the height of the cylinder. Okay? And then from that, I went straight to my calculator. Okay? Very practical skill for tennis. I know that. So you can tell that to coach. So I'll tell you how to get the bottom of the cylinder because it's not yours. It's not yours. What's that? Nothing. He can say, I don't care. <laughs> I get it, guys. I get it. It is what it is. Yes, it really is. Let's do something that's more productive. All right. I want to hug it.
Let's make sure your name's on it. A pyramid is back to being a polyhedron, just like a prism is. A um, pyramid, just like, again, with a prism. Got all these PYs going. I lost track of what I was talking about. I had hairs in my tennis balls. Juggling, right? Okay. Um, so anyway, with that pyramid, it all is getting based off the mix. Okay. Square pyramids is your most common one. Think about the Great Pyramid in, in Egypt, the three pyramids there. Those are square pyramids. Um, but again, all those pyramids, we can change the base. We got ourselves a triangular pyramid. And just like with prisms, we can keep changing that base. I have a pentagonal pyramid here. So these are again types of polyhedra. Now, with the volume of the pyramid, hopefully you realize it's not going to be the exact same formula as a prism, but we're going to keep that same formula going. Capital B, whatever the base is, times the height. But there is a relation between the prism and the pyramid, and then the cylinder and its cone. Uh, the relationship that's there is if we had the time and we could take, um, say, fill these up with some water and, and measure them out. These are kind of complements to one another. Same thing with a cone and a cylinder. These are two direct complements to one another. You would find out that um, the relationship that is there is that they're a third. Also, but they are a third. That the pyramid is a third of its of a prism. Cone is going to be the exact same formula now. So we're essentially going to it's going to be the exact same run through as we did yesterday, uh, except everything's going to be a third. Pyramids and cones are a third of uh, area of the base times the height. Right? I know the shape of the base is times the height, and we'll do the third. Okay? Now, if we have a pyramid, with the apex, the apex again is that vertex right here where they all meet up at. Um, if that apex is not directly below the, the base there, it's kind of like slightly skewed, has that Michael Jackson ring I keep talking about. It's called an oblique pyramid. So just like we saw yesterday and going through a little bit of our homework here. We have oblique pyramids as well. It doesn't change anything with anything. We still keep even with cones. Okay. Same thing with cones. We'll have oblique cones as well. Now, that height does, again, need to be perpendicular to the base. So as we work through things, okay, this needs to be the height that we want. It has to be going right through that base, right like that. That's the height that we want. If we don't have that height right here, we got to go find it. Okay, so let's jump right into it with Matt here. Matt is making a uh, capsule of a pyramid. He's got a net though. So his net is a little bit different than my net. So you can make different types of nets obviously as long as they pull back up to be that particular uh, solid. So his net is a little bit different than mine. You can calculate the bottom of that pyramid. All right, let's go do that. So the volume of that pyramid, one third. I always again encourage you, area of the base times the height. If you look at the SAT formula sheet, it's going to have length times width on there for the base. Because they're going to focus on a square um, pyramid. So they're going to have one third L times W times H on your uh, SAT formula sheet. Now, in this instance, what's the shape of my base? Um, doesn't look like I know on there, go, go by looks, but it does say in the directions it is a square pyramid. So we will go ahead and say now one third length times width, which is in this case 15 squared, right? Now, here's the thing about this net. Let's think about it. Okay, when I go and fold up that 20, So I got that 15 along the edge. 15, hopefully we all realize is that. If 
But when I pulled up that 20, I told you a second ago, the height that I want is this height right there. That's the height that I want. Okay? When I pulled up this net, I put that net back in there. Is that the right height? No. That is what we call the slant height. Okay? That is not, again, the, the height that we can use to find the height, that, sorry, to find the volume of the pyramid. So, right now, we're stuck. Okay? So, we got to go figure out here that height right here. Okay? We got to go figure that out. Let's go figure it out, though. And by a suggestion, how do we go figure it out? I said, what's, <laughs> what's been our go to thing for most of the school year? Pythagorean theorem has been, right? So that height that we need, it's always perpendicular to base. So what we have hiding right here is a right triangle. Coming right through the apex is our height, it's perpendicular to the base where my fingers are at. And then coming along right here where that 20 is located, that's where my right triangle is happening. That 20, what is that 20 representing then? It's the hypotenuse. So there is my right angle happening right where my fingers are at with the base. And that 20 then, that slant height, is going to represent the hypotenuse. So off to the side I go. What I was trying to describe, that was my height, and that is the slant height that we were just talking about. Now I gotta have a third or sorry, I gotta have a second number up there to use the Pythagorean theorem. Anybody have a suggestion what that second number is? 7.5? Where's that 7.5 come from? Yeah. So that that height that we need, okay, it's right down the middle, and it's taking that 15 and bisecting it. It's right down the middle of that base as well. So that 15 is gonna cut in half. So that's where that 7.5 is coming from. And let's go at it. Okay, if you go at that thing, that slant height will always be your, whatchamacallit, hypotenuse. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what is 20 squared minus 7.5 squared? Let's try this again. 343.75, and I doubt that turns out nice, or doesn't. Nope. So here's going to be the thing. I'm not going to do any type of like uh, reducing that radical or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that as the square root of 343.75. I'm going to leave that exactly as that. It's in a radical form. I'm not going to round it. As we've talked before, bless you, I don't want to round something that's not my final answer yet. If you start rounding intermediate numbers here, you're going to be further away from what the actual answer is. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to simplify that radical. So I'm going to leave that in that square root of 343.75 and use that as my height. If I round that number to some type of place, I'm going to be a little bit further off from what the actual answer is. If I keep it exact like that, because what the directions say, the directions do say round to your sole number, don't they? So then I'll be fine at the end. I'll be a, a, a much better answer at the end. Now go at the end here. Now it's going to show off. What is 15 squared? 225. So what we're going to do is, can you type it all into your calculator correctly? Don't just sit there and stare. Type it in. Times the square root of what? 343.75, I think it was. So one third times 225 times the square root of that number. So it says nearest whole number, which is what? 1390. Units are centimeters cubed. Okay? So 
So nothing too crazy off of that. Slant type is what you got to watch out for. All right. Keep working around. Let's go to number three. What base do we have there on that pyramid? Find me the area of an octagon. Do we know how to find the area of an octagon? No, we don't know how to find the area of an octagon, do we? It's a good thing we don't. Okay, but what do they do for us? So one of the things SAT does bring in for us is, even though they're giving us an octagon here, if you read carefully in the directions, area of the base. They did state for you already the area of the base. So part of, again, the SAT does is can you read? They gave you the area already calculated for you. So we don't have to really do any calculations here because they already calculated the area for you of the, of the octagon's base. So one-third, they already gave you the B, 2,125. Uh, I don't have to worry about that. They told you the height, didn't they? The height is 20. So I easily have the volume very quick. I didn't have to do any major calculations for the volume because they give you the piece. So it is 1 third times 2125 times 20. Uh, what would you say? 2125 times 20. And I get that fun number, 42,500 over 300, over 3. Feet cubed, right? Now, that's not what the answer is asking for, is it? What we now need to do is here figure out about how many gallons of water can be pumped into that tank. Okay? So one cubic one cubic foot of space holds seven point four eight gallons. What we essentially have here is one more unit per. Let's take that and take it over. You probably don't know that conversion off the top of your head. But if there is a conversion to happen on some of these weird ones, SAT usually gives that to you. Okay? So, as we did on, I think it was a homework. Where is that um, one cubic foot going to go? Where is that gallon going to go? We're starting here. One cubic foot. Now, here's the thing about this. I don't need to write this actually one out three times. I don't need a cubic. Because the conversion they give you has already been cubed, has it? It says literally one cubic foot. So that, it's already a volume conversion here. <clears throat> the one that we did on the homework was not a volume <coughs> conversion. And holds what? 7.48 gallons. So what's going to happen with these cubic feet? They are going to cancel out. Can you plug it into your calculator? Okay. <clears throat> 42,503 over, over 3 times that 7.5, whatever it is, 7.48. It's going to be, again, a kind of an ugly number. And does it say what around or anything? Well, about how many gallons? So we'll just go to that to nearest gallon. What is that? One hundred five thousand nine hundred sixty-seven. Yeah. So a lot of gallons. <coughs> Almost one hundred six thousand gallons. All of that. Okay. So from there, <clears throat> um, read carefully. Sometimes they give you the base, especially if you never calculated the IRE value. Now, I think the cone is on the last page. Nothing changes with the cone. The cone is the exact same thing. 
Now I'm not going to worry about this one for our time's sake. Let's go do number five. Okay? We got ourselves a composite. And let's do like I saw in the homework from yesterday. Volume of a cone is one third. Now what's the shape always of a cone? So on your SAT formula sheet, just look at the cylinder, the base will always be a circle. Therefore, the, the area of the base the formula will always be pi r squared. The pyramid changes. It can definitely be multiple types of bases, but not for a cone. So I'm looking, again, to see on your guys' work, the volume of a cone plus the volume of a cylinder, and just... Again, you'll have your formula sheets. Make sure you put down the right formulas. It's a cylinder, right? Don't accidentally do one third. It's a cone. Make sure you do the one third. Your formula sheets have has it all there. Okay? The only thing you gotta now know is what's the radius with the heights? What's the radius of the cone? Radius is six, coming from the twelve, right? What's the uh, What's the height of the cone? What's that? Height. I am disregarding you. The height of the cone is 8, right? Isn't that an 8? Okay. All right. Height of the cone is... How about the cylinder? It's the radius of the cylinder. And what's the height of the cylinder? It's the other eight, isn't it? Just a plug and chug. So six squared times eight and a third. Thirty-six times eight times a third divided by three. For the cylinder, nope, sorry, for the cone. Somebody get ninety-six? Yeah. 96.5. For the cylinder, 36 times 8. Somebody get 288? Sure. I love that enthusiasm. 36 times 8? I believe it's 288. It is. All right. Now, those two volumes we can add together. They both have pies on it. So this one we can add together, 288 plus 96. The my total volume for the cone and the cylinder, think of like a grain silo, 384 pi. Uh, we do have units, which are meters cubed. And they are asking us to round this one, 384 pi, 384 pi. Nearest whole number says 1206. Years. Okay. All right. I'm going to pause here because our time kind of got lost. And here we'll pick it back up a little bit more tomorrow, which is fine. Spheres don't take us too long. We'll do a couple more, but it's one third. Pi r squared times height.